Hey, what's going on YouTube? It's Tech Tactics here, and today we're going to be comparing NVIDIA versus AMD. So these are the two biggest graphics card companies right now. In fact, they're pretty much the only ones, unless you count integrated graphics on Intel's side, in which case they, there is three different types, but we're not going to be talking about the integrated graphics on either Intel or AMD, just simply GPUs or graphics processing units. So this video um, is going to be talking about which one or the pros and cons of both. It's not really going to be talking about which is better, but it's going to be more or less just trying to help you guys make a decision. So this is something that I see a lot of people asking questions and a lot of people arguing over um, whether or not they should go with AMD or they should go with NVIDIA or whether or not NVIDIA is better or AMD is better. So hopefully within this video, I'm going to be able to help you guys decide for yourselves whether you think NVIDIA is better or whether you think AMD is better or maybe you're just biased like I am because I actually own a NVIDIA GTX 460, a 9800 GT, and an R9 280 by AMD. So I own two NVIDIAs, one AMD, and I've actually had quite a bit of time spent using both of those brands of graphics cards. So I am able to say um, a lot of the things I encountered doing using both of these graphics cards. So hopefully you guys will enjoy this video and I'll see you back here right after this intro. All right, so now that we're back from the intro, let's go ahead and jump right on in to the pros of AMD graphics cards. Now the first pro is going to be Mantle. This is something that Nvidia doesn't quite have and that's why I think it's a pro because it's actually going to take and make it so you get extra frames per second in games if you have an AMD CPU and an AMD GPU. So that's actually really nice to see AMD going ahead and taking the time to make something that's going to help you get the FPS that you want in games. So definitely a pro on AMD's side and it is open source so in the future we'll see if Nvidia decides to pick it up and use it or maybe they'll just make their own. So we'll see what happens with that. Now moving on to the next one is going to be usually you can see better pricing on AMD's side. Although this has been changing because of mining and because the R9 or the 900 series of GTX cards came out. So the price is been messed up usually but before that in the past usually AMD does have better pricing and even right now they still do in some cases such as the R9 270X I've seen as cheap as $140 of course it was on sale but a, the GTX 660s which is essentially its main competitor is still floating around the $200 point or maybe $190 on sale still so that's just from what I've seen but usually you can seem to score some better deals on AMD's side with that said, another pro would definitely be AMD's Never Settle Forever, and that is essentially you can pick one, two, or three games depending on what graphics card you get. I got the R9 280, and I was able to pick three games. And now, they actually had a lot of good games to choose from, a lot of games that a lot of people would actually play. So, I definitely list this under a pro as that's quite awesome to be able to get your graphics card and get three free games along with it. So, moving on to the next pro is that AMD has a lot of open source and they're more willing to share their stuff rather than NVIDIA tends to uh, keep their things to themselves. Just such as an example of this would be AMD's Mantle like we talked about earlier. That's open source and they're actually allowing NVIDIA to take and use it if they want to. Whereas NVIDIA has G-Sync which we'll talk about as a pro of NVIDIA in just a few minutes. And they have G-Sync but they're actually not allowing AMD to use it. So it's kind of... It's uh, just showing that AMD is really trying to help the community out and trying to get the best performance they can for everybody, whereas NVIDIA currently is kind of sticking to themselves. So I definitely like to see AMD doing things like that and trying to help everyone's, everyone's performance improve. So that's really nice to see. Moving on to the final pro. Of course, these aren't all the pros you can come up with, but these are some of the main ones that I came up with. But moving on to the final pro, is going to be that typically they have larger uh, memory buses. Now usually uh, Nvidia doesn't like to or doesn't seem to like to use more than 256 bit memory buses. Although my 9800 GT was a 512 bit, not too many graphics cards are, uh, by Nvidia actually use more than 256. 
In fact, their highest end graphics card, or one of their highest end graphics cards, the GTX 980, is still on a 256 bit memory bus. So to see that, it's a little disappointing because the higher memory, uh, the higher or the larger the memory bus is, the more of the uh, graphics cards RAM or GDDR5 um, will be able to be used. So if you have four gigs of GDDR5 memory, but only a 256 bit memory bus, that memory isn't going to be being used as much as it could be on a three, uh, 384 bit or 512 bit. And AMD actually uses a lot of 384 bit memory buses such as my R9 280, which is only a mid, mid tier card, it actually has a 384 bit memory bus. Whereas Nvidia's high end cards only have 256 bit. So that's not something that, um, or that is something I like to see on AMD's side. Definitely really appreciate them going and making these higher, uh, even if it does cost some more money. So moving on to the cons um, of AMD, is going to be typically they have higher TDPs, um, which in a, a example of this is the 750 Ti recently, um, Nvidia came out with the 750 Ti and that has a super low TDP. In fact, in some cases you don't even need any power adapters. You can just plug it right into the PCIe and it just works fine without any cords or anything. That's really awesome to see. Even if it doesn't really increase our performance, it's still nice to see. So that was a pro on Nvidia's side, but I went ahead and talked about it a little too early. But with that said, AMD does usually have higher TDPs and the 900 series of Nvidia cards, they were also focusing, or Maxwell was focusing on having lower TDPs. And so far AMD hasn't really done anything uh, about their TDPs. So moving on to the heat, um, AMD does usually have higher heat which is something I'm starting to run into on my R9 280 as it's not even overclocked and it's reaching all the way up to 80 degrees Celsius in some games, which in my opinion is just too hot. My GTX 460, even when I overclocked it, was still running considerably cooler than that. And usually, such as the R9 295 X2, AMD's graphics cards are hot, um, a lot hotter than Nvidia's. And the R9 295 X2 is a great example as even though they went and pushed it as far as they possibly could, it's still really hot. And that's it actually is one of the first graphics cards, if not the first, I believe, to have a built-in closed-loop liquid cooler because it ran so hot. So although they're doing what they should be doing and pushing their cars to the max, I think having it being that hot is a little too far, in my opinion. So moving on to some of the pros for NVIDIA. Now, one of the pros is going to be G-Sync. And that's just their own technology that they've been coming out with to kind of make the frames per second changing a lot smoother. So it's actually really awesome to see them doing that. And although there's a lot more to say about this technology, I'm not going to go into it in great depth in this video. But if you do want to see it, let me know in the comment section below and I will make a video of it. So moving on to another pro it is something I've already said, but Nvidia usually has lower TDPs such as their 750 Ti, which I already talked about. And the next one is something else I already talked about too, but Nvidia does usually have lower heat. And so moving on to something that I actually haven't talked about already is from my experience, now you'll find both pe uh, people on both sides that complain about Nvidia's drivers or complain about AMD's drivers. But from my experience, Nvidia drivers have been pretty much flawless. I haven't ran into any sort of issue. Whereas AMD's drivers kind of suck actually. I've had a lot of issues with AMD drivers. Um, just getting my graphics card to work when I first got it was an absolute pain in the butt. And the drivers just simply weren't working right. I had to un uninstall and reinstall like three or four times. And it just, they are, their drivers weren't very good. Now, of course, people's um, experience experiences with this can change and kind of depends on uh, your graphics card or what driver you're running, or just your luck. But from my experience, I've had a lot better drivers on Nvidia's side. So I figured I would include that in there as drivers are something that can be quite important if you don't wanna to have to deal with any issues. So moving on to the final pro of Nvidia is most games are sponsored 
by NVIDIA. Now, what I mean by this is a perfect example would be Ubisoft's recent deal with NVIDIA, and that's just going to be when the game first comes out, basically NVIDIA is already going to have drivers out right away to increase the performance of those games, and it's going to perform a bit better on a NVIDIA because they're working together with Ubisoft. And on top of this, they're actually uh, starting to add in things that make it so the graphics are better, specifically on NVIDIA graphics cards. So to see this, it's upsetting, but at the same time, it's definitely a pro to have an NVIDIA graphics card. But I would, I would really like to see them not doing this as it's extremely unfair to AMD, and I don't think they should be um, ruining anyone else's experiences with the game just because they don't have a certain graphics card. So that's really bad to see, but at the same time, I'm still going to list it as a pro for NVIDIA because it's definitely something better um, that AMD doesn't quite have. So with that said, let's go ahead and move on to the cons for NVIDIA's graphics cards. Now the first con is going to be that usually they have higher prices, but we pretty much already talked about this as a pro under AMD because usually their prices are lower. And like we said, the R9 270X versus the 660 is a great example. And so moving along, um, the, another con for NVIDIA is they just don't share their stuff as much. Like we said already, they didn't share their G-Sync technology, whereas AMD what is willing to share their um, mantle. So it's a little uh, upsetting to see NVIDIA not wanting to work together as much as AMD wants to. So moving on is uh, they don't really have a reward system. They do kind of like if you buy the buy a graphics card right now, you can actually choose from one of three Ubisoft games. But there, it's definitely not extensive or as good as AMD's side. So this is definitely upsetting to see um, because the more free games you get with your graphics card, the better, obviously. So. All right, I'm sorry about that, guys. I got a phone call. But moving on, um, like I said, they don't really have as good of a reward system. And actually, AMD, the more hours you spend on playing games and stuff like that, you actually get points so that you can spend it on different sorts of rewards, um, such as a free game or, in some cases, entering to win a free graphics card and things like that. So NVIDIA actually lacks that, and it's kind of disappointing. But maybe in the future, NVIDIA will incorporate some something like this. So with that said, um, this is something that's not really important anymore. And I never agreed with. I never really liked it. But NVIDIA is actually worse for mining in most cases. So if you are interested in mining, uh, AMD was actually better. But mining's not really popular anymore. And... I disagree with mining. I I didn't like it. Um, it definitely skyrocketed the price of AMD's graphics cards, which is actually not good because the people who are actually buying graphics cards for gaming started going to Nvidia's side, which wasn't fair to AMD because the only people buying their graphics cards were the people that weren't gaming and they were actually doing mining. So it was actually bad for AMD as a company, even if they did sell a lot more graphics cards. And it was definitely annoying to the gamer that wanted to upgrade their computer but couldn't get an AMD graphics card like they wanted to because suddenly the graphics cards were ridiculously priced or they were unable to find them in stock. But this isn't something that we really have to worry about. However, if you're still interested in mining, uh, NVIDIA typically isn't as good. So yeah, that's the last con for NVIDIA. Now to wrap things up, basically um, that's just a big list of pros and cons of both NVIDIA and the AMD graphics cards. And I wasn't trying to help you guys, or wasn't trying to give you guys a flat answer of yes, NVIDIA is better, or yes, AMD is better. I was just simply trying to help you guys make your own decisions. So hopefully this video was able to do that. And if it did, definitely please be sure to leave a like down below. I would really appreciate it. And if you didn't like it, leave a dislike. And in the comment section below, uh, tell me why you didn't like it. Or tell me something that you would have added or changed from my list of things. So hopefully you guys did enjoy this though, and if you really enjoyed it, definitely please be sure to subscribe to the channel for a lot more videos like this or reviews or unboxing or various technology or computer related things that you'll be able to find on my channel. So that's about it for today. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you guys next time and peace. Here And today we're going to be doing a review of 
Five Gum. No, just kidding. We're not really going to be doing a review of this. We're actually going to be doing a review of the Beast by Dre Solo HD on-ear headphones.